what is going on guys thanks for tuning in to kev the coach experience kev the coach here i coach driven nice guys through breakups i help you rebound your life by discovering your truths and your purpose building your confidence in your mission and understanding women and relationships and i'm happy to have you here you're in the right place to enjoy self-help or drastic improvement in your personal relationships and professional life and if you haven't already please subscribe follow share with people who need to hear it you know share the love uh, wherever you're listening because i'm doing this on youtube and it's also going on the podcast um so i'm happy to have you guys here but with that let's jump into our content i'm if you've first time ever seeing i do reddit dating advice column so today we're on the relationship underscore advice column and i'm going to be reading this person's uh post and giving some advice um and our topic for today is my 21 year old or he's a 21 year old his girlfriend is 20 has lost her sex drive so let's give him some advice here he says my girlfriend and i have been together for about a year and a half and our sex life was amazing she told me a few months ago that she's no longer interested in having sex really and that would only happen a little bit she has reasons which is perfectly fine since i understand those reasons so i'm not mad at her or anything at all but i'm a very hypersexual person of course we all we're all humans you know we're all humans just being around her makes me want to have sex but i can't so yeah i want to kind of like talk on that a little bit um you know a lot of people you know in relationships and dating you know they tend to hit a point where like after the honeymoon phase they kind of are like done you know, sex starts to kind of lose its play. This is a, this is a common theme. The passion, you know, has a plateau. I think for, for every relationship. Obviously, some relationships are worse than others because maybe they're not fully aligned. You know, their values are different. They're not really totally on the same page about a lot of things. Um, but in general, when people lose their, their sex drive, um, you know, there's a few things we can go into. But I want to finish this thing here. Uh, but just to understand that we are all sexual beings. You can't suppress your desire. I just wanted to talk about this because my guys I hear sometimes are like, I can't can't help but check out women and all this stuff. And for girls who are maybe seeing their man check out other women, it's like this is this is life, you know, especially for your our masculine guys. Um, obviously like being disrespectful about it and checking out women in a in an inappropriate manner is different, but like suppressing a man's sexual desire, you know, if you're the girlfriend of a man who maybe he, he has a high sex drive. You don't want to like, you don't want to suppress. Obviously, this is a problematic if he has porn addiction issues or whatever. That's different. Um, but in general, like, you know, human beings have always had a sexual um, drive. You know, this is what populates the earth, man. So without a sex drive, you know, we'd be nowhere. So everyone just understand that's a part of life. And ultimately, I've actually seen studies where women um, have a higher sex drive than, than men too. So just, just understand that. So let's finish. She says, it's starting to really affect me because I want her, but can't have her. I don't really know what to do. Okay. So there's kind of like a checklist of things I start to think of when, you know, she says like, I'm just like, lately, I just don't want to have sex. You know, obviously there's a few things going on, you know, I would, you know, first check, like, is my leadership in the relationship? Um, am, am I there? Like, am I meeting that leadership role in the relationship? You know, I believe that, all relationships need to have polarity. And if you've never heard of that before, we're talking about masculine and feminine energy, right? So we need to have two people who, we're not talking about role playing here, uh, but we kind of are, to be totally frank with you. We're talking about, you know, a man who, who leads, he's confident, he's a decision maker, you know, he's strong. I'm not saying the woman can't have these things. You definitely want a woman with some masculine energy. But you want to have a lot of feminine energy. You want to have a polarizing relationship. So a lot of times what happens, I'll give you an example. You know, two people meet, um, you know, you, you go through the dating phase, right? She, he courts you. He takes you out. He pays for your dinners. You know, he pays for your drinks. He's really masculine, right? And you're, the women, the women are typically very comfortable in the beginning playing that role of allowing the man to take them out pay for their dinners and at some point right this starts to die down you know the, the honeymoon phase ends things start to get a little little plain a little boring not always you know, not always but in a general sense the sex starts happening uh, or, or stops happening i should say as they at least as frequently you know and a lot of the times what that is is one or more of the people has stopped living out their role so for example the guy and here's tip number one is he stops courting you 
he stops taking you out. He stops doing the fun stuff, you know, set, setting up that Thursday date night, getting some drinks at the bar, having some fun. You know, he stops doing that. And guess what that night is? You, you might think, well, okay, well, you know, we're working hard. You know, we're working towards buying a house. You know, the relationship is advancing. Okay, that's fine and all. But guess what's happening is you guys are essentially losing your polarity. You know, when you have two people that are basically doing the same things, like you're both working hard, you know, you're both working hard, you're both like leading these masculine lives, you have no polarity. You know, like you got to have, when you have batteries and you put them into a controller, there has to be a plus on one side and a minus on the other, you put them in there, bang, you got sparks. You know, that's the same thing with relationships and people in general, you know? So that's why, you know, sometimes you'll see a guy... You know, look at like a, you know, you think like bartender, or like a waitress who's super like feminine, you know, and he's really attracted to her because she's, she's less masculine than maybe the woman who is wearing a suit and she's, you know, she's a boss chick, like she's crushing shit. She's got like that sales chick energy, you know what I mean? Um, it's a different attraction. I'm not saying you wouldn't be attracted to that, but it's different. Um, so it's just understanding that there's polarity in relationship. And if you don't understand that for one, you need to keep the courting going. It doesn't stop. You don't stop dating your woman because that date for both of you is an opportunity for sex to happen, to hook up, to have a fun time, right? So if those stop happening, of course the sex is going to stop, you know? Um, so that's that's one big area I would look at. And that's most relationships is, you know, they get into that that period where they're like, well, now, you know, we're just working hard. So there's, there's not as much time we could spend together, you know? But guess what? You may think that's a great excuse right now. We're building towards that house, yada, yada. But what happens is, is if you don't really fill that desire tank, we got this desire tank. Like I said earlier, humans, we have desires, you know, and our sex tank needs to be filled. So if you're not paying attention to that and you just keep going, like we're working hard, you know, oh, we missed the date night this week, you know, keeps going. Eventually you start to look elsewhere. I'm not saying anyone like it's not a good thing to do and it's not a valid thing to do. But like I said, we're humans, we have desires. So a lot of the most loyal people, they'll never cheat, but they, they do have fantasies. You know what I mean? Fantasies are real. And if you're insecure and you're hearing this, I'm sorry. But your girlfriend, your boyfriend has fantasies, you know, and the quicker you honestly just address that as a couple um, and you're, you're confident in your own self person <laughs> to be like, hey, I have fantasies, too. And, you know, maybe we can be open about this, have a conversation and you start to open a network of, of possibility. Obviously, it's a slippery slope. You want to make sure you have your your boundaries um, stood firmly on. Um, but in this case with this person, like that's the first step. Are you courting her? You know, are you playing the masculine role? Are you setting up dates and courting her? And, you know, a lot of people get sensitive to the whole, you know, like masculine energy shit, but you can't deny nature and what we're attracted to. It's just what it is. You know, it's like there's a reason the divorce rate is where it's at. You know, couples tend to just they, they don't find time to continue um, that process, you know, um, and you look at like, you know, a lot of like. You know, obviously what you're comfortable in, what are you most comfortable in? You know, that's the that's really the question, you know? A lot of people are like, I want a 50-50 relationship. Okay, that's fine. But you might miss the sparks. You know, you might not have the sparks. And you might be cool with it for a little bit. Maybe like two, three years, you're like, I've been in this 50-50 relationship, not really having much sex, if, if any at all. But it's, uh, you know, you, you admire the bond and the companionship. Okay, I get it. But I think deep down, most of us... We want to have amazing sexual experiences. Um, just we want to live out our desires, especially our hella masculine people who, who really like maybe they're they're just real go getters in life, you know. And they have a tough time settling down because they know if they settle down, they're worried about the the, the sex life dying down and that kind of stuff happening, right? That's why you see a lot of like entrepreneur playboys, you know, because they just. They don't have time for someone to, to, to settle settle them down in their, their energy field. Um, so back to this, you know, general areas. So that, that's the first step. Are you leading, right? Answer that question. You know, are you leading? Are you doing kind of the leadership role that she was attracted to? Maybe think back to the beginning of when you guys, when like when the sparks were flying. Maybe it's even just, maybe it's just a year ago, whatever you're, wherever you're at in the relationship. When was the last time she was like infatuated with you? 
You know, like she was dying to get you in the bedroom. What were the like the habits, the things you were doing that had her like that? You know, were you going to the gym a little bit more? You know, were you hanging out with your friends a little bit more? Were you a little bit more like independent? Were you a little bit more on your purpose? Because I guarantee you most of the time when guys are on their purpose, they're working out, they have a high motivation, high drive for like life and just achieving things. Typically, their woman is like, oh, damn, that's pretty hot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's be real with each other now. There's a correlation to that. So these are, these are some things you want to think about. So it's number one, you know, are you leading? Are you, are you courting her still? Or have you kind of given up on that? Um, have you like told yourself a false narrative? Like I said earlier, like, well, we're just working hard. And it's like, okay, well, then you're going to have to deal with no sex, right? You're going to have to deal with that. And that's not fun, not fun to me. I don't think it's fun to most most people. Um, and you know, I, I, I guarantee you, there's something along that. You know, the most loyal people will stick around in a relationship. Like she's saying she's no longer interested in having sex, really, right? Loyal people will stick around because they love you, they have companionship, a lot of reasons people will stick around. Um, but don't let that be a reason to be complacent. You know what I mean? Don't let that be a reason to just, well, if she's, she's happy, I'm happy, whatever, you know? Like, don't wait till that rainy day, you know, when she kind of wakes up and she's like, you know what? I know we're not having sex, but I want sex in general, <laughs> you know? Like, my fantasy's been going crazy. I've been having some crazy dreams. I don't know if you guys have seen that Sex Life show on Netflix. You know what I'm talking about, you know? Don't, uh, don't, don't wait till it's too late you know, and she's digging into her fantasies. Get your shit together. You know what I mean? Um, take care of the bedroom. Don't let it wait in the background. You know, your career and everything is important. Get that shit straight. Do it while you're single. You know, like don't date until your shit is straight. You know what I mean? Because it's harder to grow something when you're like, when now when you have a girl, because you're gonna, you're not gonna give her as much time. It's gonna be draining on your energy your, your purpose is going to be confusing and, and that's unattractive so do this shit while you're single and maybe even consider not dating i know about this is obviously totally indirect advice not related to this guy um but you know it, it is related in a way it's like you know if you're on your purpose you're working out you are doing the things you need to be doing to make yourself feel good you know usually your woman is dying to have sex with you on the regular. You know, you're taking care of your body, you're taking care of yourself, you know, because that's what women are attracted to. It's no secret. There's no getting around what women are attracted to. You know what I mean? At least most women. Attracted to busy, successful, alpha male type figure. Sure, 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 sure. Some women we see will will we'll settle for, you know, the nice guy. We all know there's people who are settling, you know, in relationships. Um, but it's not fun being that guy. You know, I know plenty of hot, hot, sexy women who are settled with the nice guy. You know, the guy who clearly is like, damn, she's with him. You know, like that kind of guy. You guys might be thinking, well, well maybe that route's the right way, you know? But like, I'm telling you, there's a rude awakening in that because these girls in their mid to late 20s, early 30s, they're getting settled. And then, you know, there's a reason a lot of these relationships are being divorced in your mid upper 30s, your lower 40s, whatever it is, right? Look at the show Sex Life. Mm, you've already, if you've seen it, you know, I, I had to see it because it's, you know, doing what I do, it's just, it's too up my alley. I had to watch it. But um, it's actually not that bad. It's not that bad. You know, acting is questionable, but it's, it's a good time. So consider all of this. You know, if I caught you, you're in a relationship right now and you're like, damn, you know, I kind of have been off my shit. I haven't been setting up date nights. Get off porn, by the way, get off porn. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a game changer. Eat a quick sip. That's some good shit. Um, so, yeah, get on your purpose. If your relationship, you know, pay attention. Am I courting her? You know, am I taking her out? You know, when's the last time I set up a night for us? You know, because you have to set up, you have to be logical about it. You have to set up an opportunity for sex to happen. If you guys come home from work every Thursday night, you know, and you just throw on your pajamas, make some food, eat the food, sit on the couch, mad full, like, what are you going to, you're not having sex. Like, 
Like, and that's not any kind of good sex either. You're going to be just all full and, you know, like you're just going to just sliding in or, you know what I mean? Like, you got to be real about it, you know? It's not, it's not any kind of sex you want to be having. You want to, you want to do like a fun night out, you know? Do what you need to do. And obviously we've had this pandemic shit. Most areas are open. Some areas of the world aren't. Can't help you there. Uh, but do what you can. Do the best you can to create an opportunity for sex to happen because without the opportunity it's not going to happen like i said if it does happen it's going to be it's going to be lame um so i'm trying to think if i missed anything else man uh you know advice for you like i said if you're in a relationship i think i've just i've rammed it home if you're single focus on your purpose man you know um dating should be it should be your second priority after you've already feel like you're in a space where your career is is lit. And the reason that is, is because I don't want to go too far. I'm going off a little bit. You're getting a little bit of extra content from me. Um, the reason that is, is because like I said earlier, you know, when you don't know what it is you're doing in life, you won't be at your true full potential. You know, if you start dating and you haven't like really understood your purpose yet, then by the time you do understand your purpose, hopefully you do. Cause I think everyone has a God given talent and purpose that needs to be exposed. Um, and, um, utilized but if you don't you know and then you're in this relationship and then you discover it you're gonna have a lot of uncomfortable growth i mean she might ride with you but a lot of times when you go rapid growth towards a different direction when you're already in a relationship it causes a lot of problems because your values change the things you're interested in change i mean when you're a person who's on self-growth self-improvement your life changes fast and if that person's not on the same wavelength it's going to create issues you're going to clash so i'm telling you your values are important so I'm going to do one last little read over here. I just want to make sure I got you, homie. Um, you got this, man. She's loyal. She loves you. She's, it's, it's honestly respectful that she's communicated that to you. You just got to step up your game, create that opportunity for some fun to happen, and dude, you'll be right back on it. You just got to get back on your game. Remember who you were when you attracted her in the first place, right? Who was that dude? How did he get her? You know, what, what was he doing? How was he so savvy that he got in the, her in the bedroom? So um but with that guys i appreciate you for tuning in um, once again please just uh subscribe you know follow share like um you know help me do my thing so i can spread the word to all of our homies out there all my ladies to all my lady listeners i appreciate y'all but if you'd like to share with me personally guys um instagram is one of my main places i'm at you can send me a message at kev um underscore the coach um and send me a message in quotation marks superior man i have a superior man program um like i said helping you rebound your your intimate life you know helping you understand your truths your purpose so you can get on your shit and uh, live a life of abundance you know what i'm talking about um and finally um yeah you guys can donate too i got a link below um if you like this episode you want to send me a couple bucks for you know the, basically just making this impact on you and it's it's it's, help, it's helped you change your life um i'd appreciate that but i love y'all um you know follow me on all my platforms, check out the link. Um, but with that, I will see y'all later. Kev the Coach, out.